In order to get a really good trace in Shortcuts a lot or any program for that matter, it's important that you start with a good source. So I'm going over to images.google.com or Google Images, and I'm going to pull up the logo from my old high school. Now there's two things that I want to share with you here. When you do a search for whatever it is you're looking for, you'll notice that there's a little option here that says Tools. So click on Tools, and here you have a series of options, one of which is Size. Now the bigger the image, the higher the resolution, and the better the trace will be. So we're going to click Large, and I'm going to show you kind of the difference between a high-res image and a low-res image. So the first one I see here is the Trojan head. And when I click on it, I can tell that it's nice and crisp. And when you highlight it, or just take your mouse and place it over the graphic, this isn't always the case, but usually it'll show you the resolution. So here it's 800 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels tall. It's pretty good. Now let's do the same thing here, and let's set this to medium. And let's find a Trojan head here. We click on this one and highlight it. Now this one's only 940 by 788, so it's smaller. Let's take a look at this one. This one's only 666 by 720, but the Trojan head doesn't even take up all the space. Now if we just leave it at any size, this is what it's gonna come up with, and you can see how small this one is. 200 by 200, super small, okay? Which is why you always wanna make sure that, if possible, start with the largest image you can. It's also very important that if you're doing this, you click on Usage Rights and find things that are listed as Creative Commons licenses, which means that you can typically use them, especially not-for-profit. So here, I have a large Creative Commons license image of the Trojan head, and this one's actually 1,200 pixels by 1,600 pixels. That's huge compared to the other one. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to save this. Save that to my downloads, and we're gonna go into Shortcuts a lot. And I'm gonna click on the Trace button here. And I'm gonna browse and select the image. It's under my downloads. There it is. And this is a massive image, which means that I'm gonna get a really good trace. My go-to is the color layers, and obviously looking at this image here, we have purple, and we have white. Now here's what I want to demonstrate. If I zoom in here, you can see how far in this tracing goes. Now obviously there's a little bit of white there, but it's smart enough to know that, well, you might not be able to cut that very accurately, so I'm going to kind of stop right there. And you can see how crisp these little cutouts are. Done very, very well. Now let me go and download a lower resolution version of this. Now before I do that, let's just trace it and hit OK. Okay, made it really big. That's okay, we can resize it. I'm going to resize that, oops. Now if you hold down the Shift key while you resize it, it will keep it in proportion. Okay, so here is the high resolution version of this. Now let's go back to Google and let's get a, let's get the small one. Let's find like a really small one. Okay, so this one here is only 200 pixels by 200 pixels. I'm gonna save this to my downloads. And now let's go and do the same thing. We're gonna trace. And here it is, you can see on my Mac, it shows me the actual dimensions, 200 by 200. I'll open that up. Okay, now you can already tell in this preview window here that there's a lot of pixelation. It's not very crisp. Using the same settings I had there, I'm going to update the preview and look at the difference. Okay, so there's only so much you can do to clean this up. I'm going to try to smooth it a little bit so it doesn't look so jagged. Okay, and you can try to resample it. Resampling basically means it's going to take the image and kind of make it bigger. But typically, when you take a low resolution image and try to make it bigger, all you're doing is magnifying the pixelation. And it's okay, but look, it, it can't even get into, even though I have the detail all the way up to 100, it's not doing a very good job of getting into these little details. So let's, let's go ahead and process this. 
and let's put it side by side with this one here and let's zoom in okay and you can already tell the difference here look at the look at these lines here look how nice those are uh, obviously these little cutouts here are completely missing okay so that's really the difference between and why you want to use a higher resolution image. So let me show you that again. I'm gonna go under Downers Grove North logo and under tools, we're gonna to change the size to large and that's always gonna give you the highest resolution image based on your query. And don't forget to make sure you're playing by the rules when you're using images from Google. Using the Creative Commons licenses option is the way to go. So now that I have this here, let's say that I wanted to take this and put it on a white piece of HTV, so it's two layers. I'm gonna take and right click, copy, and then right click on the mat and hit paste. So it's the same exact size. And then what I can do, so I can go over here to this wrench, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a shadow blackout. So it'll make it solid and also get rid of all the little cutouts in the middle. And if you want, you can change the color. I went over here to this little palette, and I'm gonna take that and make it white. And then as you can see here, it fits in there nicely. Need to put this, let's bring this to the back. Arrange, send to back. That will keep this layer up in front. And now we have a little white border that goes around it. Now, with the shadow blackout, you can actually make that larger if you want. So if I go back to this wrench while I have it selected, and I have it selected here in the layers panel, you can tell that the top one is the purple layer. The bottom one, you can't really see down here because it's white, but I do have it selected and I can increase the size of that shadow. Okay, this would be great for making stickers as well. And these are both vector files now. So I can take this, and if you want, you can group it. And I'm gonna go to File, Export, and we'll call it Trojan. I'll put it on my desktop and hit Save. I'm gonna make sure that I set it to design space compatible because I'm gonna be using this with my Cricut. And let's go over to design space and hit upload. Upload image, browse. And then on my desktop here, I have trojan.svg. Open that up and upload. And there it is. And there it is. And as you can see here, I can right click, ungroup. And I have the shadow layer here. We can put this back to where it was. And if I select all, or just draw a box around both of these. Now if you're cutting this out with HTV, obviously you can just hit make it. And you can see that it'll take that layer and that layer, put them on separate mats, which is what you want. But if you wanna make this into a sticker, you can select both of these and then just hit flatten and now you have a print to cut. And it's kind of hard to see here, but if we zoom in, you can see it's got that little bit of white around the edge. So that is ready to go as well.